of the dance we're going to be doing most, you know, there's this dance which is just called ktsim, which means to dance or to jump or to hop, or, but it's uh, an improvised dance and it can be women and women together, men and men together, women and men, um, or lots of people doing it together, one person dancing, but that's what we're going to start with. And then we're going to do some specific dances and as much as we can get to the men's dances. Um, in preparing to teach this today, like I said, I haven't been teaching a lot of Albanian dances these years. Um, but um, in looking at the videos that I prepared, I, I have 25 hours of video of dance and life in Kosovo, 25 hours. So we picked out some little bits and I do have a playlist of lots of Albanian dance and life videos, lots of weddings and things, and they're all available for you to look at. There's a link uh, that, that we're putting on the chat as well as in the resource material, so you can watch hours and hours of video, just clips. But today in the class, we did pull some little clips so you can see the specific dances. Um, but in looking at these, at these videos, um, have, having not seen them for a long time, it gave me such a deep appreciation for these Albanian dances because as in the rest of the Balkans, you all know this in the countries that where you love, study, do dances from, life has changed so much in the last 10 years especially and so many of the people that we knew are now in Europe, are they're migrants and they've gone through so much and when I see um, the women doing these dances and the men doing the very uh, complicated, let's say, um, Okoya dances, for example, Kulchoya, they are such a, it's extraordinary that they're surviving in the way that they are surviving. It, it is quite incredible. These men who have been through so much, and women in the war and its aftermath, and moving and trying to get to Europe and all of this, that they are still, that the dancing has become this incredibly powerful part of continuity in their lives. So much has changed, the way they live, the, what's in their houses, what their houses are like, the relationships between people are now distant. Uh, it's all Facebook, basically, um, because people are living in different places. But the dance is something that is still going on. So a couple of the videos in my, uh, my video playlist you can look at are, are just from, you know, a week ago. And, and these epic, incredibly slow, beautiful dances are still being done. So let us now begin with Ktsim. So this is the basic dance. Again, it's done by women and by men. If you have any questions, basically while I'm talking, please put them on the chat and Genevieve will, will bring them up. Um, if you can grab a handkerchief, it would be handy. You might, a, a little towel or something or a hanky too, uh, that, that might be nice to have, have with you. So right away, we're going to do um, some watching your videos. So I have little video clips that we're going to go um, kind of weave into the dancing today. So uh, just hold your horses because we're going to dance soon. But first I want you to see Ktsim. So K-C-I-M, Ktsim. It just means this basic um, dance that we do and everybody does it a little differently. So my objective today in doing this workshop is to give everybody the confidence to dance to Albanian music and improvise and make it your own. And that's what it's all about. It's about being together, being with your friends, hanging out, sharing this really rich, beautiful culture in your, and doing and moving as you want to and moving and finding your way of moving within that style. That's the whole deal. So Genevieve, let us share the Ktsim video um, and uh, yeah, just we're starting out. Um, it's a, it's about a five minute video. The other videos are a bit shorter, but um, we're starting out with this one because you I because it will give you the sense of of how this all goes. The various formats for Ktsim, the various ways that it's done, combination of people when it's done together in a, a boy and a girl. Um, it's called Kshota, which is. Um, uh, a special song and a special kind of flirtatious dance, like Rucinica becomes, you know, like many cultures, they, they take a, a dance and make it into a flirtatious couple dance, so you'll see that. But the funny thing about this video you're about to see, it starts with George Chittenden, the one, the only George, the fabulous Zerna and clarinet player who was visiting with Lisa and George who were visiting me in Kosovo, I think about 1987. And so it just happens that he's, 
he happens to be in some of these. So the Zerna you're going to hear at the beginning is actually uh, George playing Zerna. And you're going to see women from Rubavo up in the mountains just dancing in their living room, just kind of hanging out because George is there and Lisa's playing a big a big tin pan. And that sucks too. So let's watch this and let me know if you have questions. Here we go. So, uh, so that's Katsim. So let's do it ourselves. You see that it's done. It is... It is so the feeling of being Albanian. When you hear this tune, I don't know now who has joined us from Kosovo, but welcome. Um, let us uh, begin to do this, but it is it, that rhythm, just moving your legs, moving your feet to that rhythm, is what it is to be Albanian. That, that sense of song and timing, and it's so much part of life, part of everybody's life, even as things have modernized. Okay, so for, for those, uh, many of you have done this maybe before, but we're going to go right and left. And one and two. One and two. One and two. So if you're just doing the feet, that's all there is to it, basically like that. Just one and two. One and two. One and two. One and two. Little variation, you can go point and two. And one and two and one and two and one and two and try the other side and a left and two and point and two and one and two and one and two we can go forward and side and forward and side and forward and side and forward other side like that so the feet are very simple um, it's just keeping the beat and again, it's what's going on socially. It's what's going on as a culture and with your family and your friends. And as you saw in the weddings, um, it is obviously the crucial part of the weddings and it's done the whole time, basically for weeks, doing this kind of dancing and who is out in front and, and they are, um, if they're dressed like a bride, they may not be the bride of the day, they may have been married years ago. They may have a bunch of kids, but if they still can basically pull it off, that's, that's the parameters. They dress like a bride, and then they are showing the bride wealth. They're showing um, what has been given to them, the gold and the jewelry and the wealth that's been given to them by their husband's family, and all the things that are going on during the wedding. And if you have young women doing it, people are looking and saying, hmm, who could we... What would be a good groom for this girl? What would be a good husband? So much is going on, but the hands... Um, are unique to every woman. Now, many of the women, it's just kind of fingers together and loose, like this, like this. And they turn around in a circle or in and out. And I'm kind of here, I'm kind of have my fingers together a little bit, here and here, and in and out, and in and out. So everybody just try this. Don't worry about the feet right now. We're just feeling this groove with your hands like this and this really subtle and soft, really the fingers together like this, subtle and soft like this. Now some people do it a little more extravagantly in the ensemble, in the, in the stage versions. It's um, often done, you know, bigger of course, with fingers out there and dropping the wrist on the downbeat. So we're going a rap, da doom, da tick doom, da tick da doom, tick da tick doom, da tick da doom, tick da tick doom, da tick da doom. I'm dropping my wrist on the downbeat like this. So, so far we've just had this little bit of fingers together really soft, which is the way I would say most women do. Some people do it out bigger like this. Some people do a little, a little ornamentation, a little bit of a roll here like this. Do a little bit of roll like that. You can also do it maybe at the top and the bottom. Like that. Um, and now when I do these, when I teach, I do teach um, scene in my world dance class. And when I do it, I'm, um, I'm always thinking of some woman in particular. Um, some people do it with one hand like this, and I'm always thinking of Ferida, my, um, my landlady when I lived in Pristina part of the time, and she would do, you know, sometimes one hand very subtly like this, like this, 
Nuria takes it out like this, like this, and uh, Dusha kind of has a dip like this, the one that was dancing with um, George Zerna in, in Rugovo, she has this thing going on, kind of a kind of a bounce, a little bit of a harder bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. Okay, so we're just gonna do this to some different rhythms. Now, when you pick it up, when you pick up the beat and you do it in a couple, then it becomes a little one, two, three, and a one, two, three, and a one, two, three, a rafa ba ti ke da da da, a rafa ba ti ke da da da, and forward and side. So we, this is where we can add it. When we take the seam out and we're doing it as a couple, then we can call it shota. So if somebody gets together in a couple like that, a man and a woman, or in the video you saw two men doing shota, they were doing this dance of flirtation. Because in the old days, now not so much, but the women were in the women's part doing a wedding. Men were over there. The women and men were not in the same place doing weddings. And people loved it that way because they could really express themselves. Women were very free to express themselves if there's no men around. So, um, so the men in this case were doing shota because there were two guys who were pretty good dancers. And so they did shota by themselves. So then we have this step where we're going here and here forward and side, and forward and side, and forward and side, and here, and here, and here, and here. Or we couldn't do that little touch thing, that touch and back, touch and back, touch and back. So as, as other dance cultures, if you're doing the couple dance and you have a handkerchief, then it's a thing of expressing yourself with a handkerchief that at some point um, you take it from, from the other person. Okay. Okay. All right. By the mediation, no way, Jose. By the cuyemore, prebuches, no boy, cosola, hey, more. Near servet. So we're just doing tim milk tupac like this. So let's start. We we're going to do it in a few different rhythms. So we have, um, let's just start. Well, I'm Bairam, perfect timing for Bairam to join us because this is a song. This is one of my favorite Albanian songs about the partridge um, leading, the partridge that is the lovely young woman leading the dance. So here we go, a little bit of Ktsim. And there may be a slight sound delay between Janet's dancing and the music, so just do your best to follow the, the beat. All right.
basic moves. You get the feet, you get the hands. Now that you've done a few different hand movements with me, so simple, so easy, but I just want you to feel and bring in Albanian, that feel, that melos, that, um, you know, that emotion, that love inside and bring it out then with the music in through your body. So let the music just wash through your body and let it come out in this easy little step but with full heart and doing the, the movements as you want to do them. So now that you've seen a few things I'm doing, now just make it your own. Do whatever you like, it, whatever expresses who you are with your hands, because that's what it's all about. Oh, this is for, for Samet, for people who are from Ferizai, from that region near Ritia. Um, this is the girls' death playing. So this, this, thing called a daira or deaf. Many of you know it, those of uh, Balkan students of culture, um, you know this deaf. This is something, it's called a deaf, D-E-F or daira. And it is in every Albanian home, at least it used to be on the wall. So any time you want to, you can pick up, a, a young girl can pick up the deaf and start playing and people start singing. So you can have a dance party anytime, and that's super cool. You don't need a band to do Albanian dance. You, all you need is a rhythm or clapping or singing, but usually there's a daida involved. So what you're gonna hear now, we're gonna do the same thing, but now you're on your own, or follow me if you want. Follow exactly what I'm doing, or exactly do whatever you feel like. And um, we'll be doing this to a group of girls from Ferizai. Some of you, yeah know that area so um it's a girl singing a little bit of a different sound here we go
let's now finish the team with shota. So this is faster or upbeat. If you've got a hanky, then then bring it out because we're gonna go rum bum ba tik dum bum ba tik step together step step together step. A one two three. A one two three. A one two three. A one two three. You can do whatever you want. Go around the house and come back. <laughs> Don't leave entirely, but you can do it wherever you want. So imagine that you're doing it with me or with anybody you like, and you're going like this, a little bit of teasing with a handkerchief, and then on your way, and whatever feet, whatever footwork you know that fits with the music and that feels good to you, go for it. Here we go with Shota. circle where you're not holding hands because that that's called vale so vale v-a-l-l-e vale means you're holding on ktsim means you're not holding on so those are the big two types of albanian dance